Okay, on to lunch. Now, we can see right off the bat, our main meal consists of a dehydrated ration, as well as our noodles. And depending on who you ask, this can be the Achilles heel of this meal, because this definitely re requires preparation. You have to. This is going to require some time and attention spent. Uh, right on the label, it says that it requires 15 to 20 minutes just to let the water soak into the ration. And you have to stir it approximately every five minutes. And it doesn't come into account your migoreng noodles. This calls for 350 milliliter of water. This is 400 milliliter of water. And depending on what your operations are, if you're a sniper, if you're doing whatever, it's those special forces guys that get this, this might not be the greatest thing to have as opposed to something that you can just open and eat. Yes, it weighs less, but yes, you have to carry more water, or you have to have a water source, which means you have to leave your, your hide, your sniper nest, your OP, whatever it is, you're going to have to leave to get more water to make these meals. You're also going to have to have a heated source to make your migoreng noodles. And I don't know if any of you spend any time in the field, but if you use paraffin or anything like this, this stuff can be smelled from quite a distance away. I'm going to be leaving a link down in the bottom in the description where Sticky Finger 745 has an Australian mess kit. I believe he's got an Australian cooker too, which would be used to reconstitute these things. And also I'll leave that link for Old Mate Drop Air's comparison vid between the CR, CR1M and the PR1M. Well, now that we've got all that out of the way, I'm going to use my upstairs tactical stove in my kitchen to make these noodles. And let's get these noodles rehydrated. And of course, make our sports drink. And don't forget, we still have our bag of extra goodies to help us clean up, or in case that we just need something else to add some flavor. The older version of these had black writing, but it did not have a lot of information on it. It was in white, so you could see and understand exactly what was going on. This is more of a silver as opposed to a white. It is a little harder to read. But I guess if you pause your screen, you could be able to read some of this information. And I'll put down what some of the contents and ingredients are while we're doing the review. And so let's open this thing up. It's got these nice little handy dandy tear notches. <laughs> sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You don't exactly want to destroy this bag because this is going to be your <laughs> the way how you're going to cook this. Now, last time I really gaffed one of these up, I poured the water inside of this bag and I made an absolute mess. Look, what it wants you to do is flatten the bottom of your bag to kind of make a pot or a little foil pot. Pour these contents in and then we're going to add our boiling water. Now, it also says that you can crush this and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that's just going to break it up and help get that water in all these little bits a whole lot faster. And this is just a simple kind of like wax paper bag. And all that beef teriyaki is right down in there. Just give that a smell. Looks like there's little bits of corn. I think that's the first time I've ever seen corn in beef teriyaki. Hmm. Now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do the RAB method <laughs> of rehydrating freeze-dried food. So I'm going to pour the water in this container first, but also I'm going to put the whole 350 milliliter of water in here. Ordinarily, I, uh, I don't do that because it tends to be very soupy, but remember, you can also drain these things off. I know, I can hear it out there. You're doing it backwards! I understand, I understand. There's a method to Rocky Rab's madness. And then we're going to take the beef teriyaki and pour it into the foil container. If you do it slowly, you can make sure that every bit of this touches that water and has, what's the word, it has a better chance of being reconstituted properly. And 
and then like the directions say about 15 to 20 minutes and we will give this a stir about every five minutes and just to give you some comparisons this ration weighs 250 grams which is about 8.4 ounces just a little over and this one when it was dry it weighed 130 grams and now that we added all of that water that 350 mil now it is 15.8 ounces or 468 grams okay i feel like i'm on iron chef the first five minutes have elapsed but let me take a look at this you can see it's still very soupy in here which is why they gave you that bag of rice and this mi goreng they can uh, use those noodles or that rice as a bed for this stuff but i'm really hoping that this stuff thickens up a lot okay now i got the noodles cooked what i'm going to do is i'm going to use all of these seasoning packets this one is relatively fresh however i've been making this on my own and you can see that this is starting to separate a little bit don't let that scare you all you have to do is just dip that in some nice warm water and that will get it all back happy the way it's supposed to be now if you add all of this it gives it a nice little zip these are fried onions that's the seasoning and then this is all the oils and the spicy stuff right here mm. you know how much i enjoy that get all that palm oil in there Try to get every last drop. That's just liquid love. Then use your spoon or your whatever you got available and just mix them all up with your nice warm noodles. Get it all incorporated. And then let's take a look at this one last time. See, it is still incredibly soupy. You don't have to be scared because part of the point of having a soupy like this and adding all that water is this helps provide you nourishment but also hydration. But I think what I'm going to do instead of adding this to the tray, seeing how there is so much in there, I'm going to grab one of my uh, British mess tins and we'll pour it into that. Now we'll try to get <laughs> most of this in here because we're going to save some for the tray so we can place it on the bed of our mi goreng. Wow, this is very interesting indeed. You can see that it's hydrated rather well, but it is very, very soupy. So you have to ask yourself, would you rather have this and wait up to 15, 20 minutes or <laughs> open up one of these? Hmm. Well, you can definitely see it has reconstituted all those little bits of meat little bits of corn and we'll find out exactly what is inside of that and this calls for 500 to 600 milliliters which is anywhere from 16 to 20 ounces all right let's get everything else down on the tray again we have some more gum our Jack Link's steak bar Our jam sandwich or a Jamie Dodgers. And of course, you can hang on to these too if you wanted them for your tea, whenever you had that. These ones are the first busted up ones I think I've had. Then again, we got the ADF chocolate ration. I guess it pays when you get them brand spanking new. Some salt and pepper if we need it. And then lastly, the musk flavored <laughs> lifesavers. And from everything I'm led to believe, they're like a rose water flavored or scented candy. I've only had them once, and I, I'm sure if I had them multiple times, I would acquire a taste for them. Well, maybe. I've never really acquired a taste for the liver. And then, of course, the big goreng. We'll slide that down here. Of course, we're going to use that as a bed. And then we'll pour this teriyaki beef over it you can see it's it's okay it is definitely running but like we said it's also meant to rehydrate you as well well before things start cooling down let's give everything a try it's the beef teriyaki with the mingo of course you can see that 
corn prominently displayed. The beef is very fine and stringy. It almost reminds me about that. Reminds me of that Malaysian ration, how they had that beef floss. It's kind of exactly what it reminds me of. Let me just try some on its own. The mee goreng is nice and spicy. It is chewy. It has a lot of bite. And remember, we talked about earlier, with the water it came to like 468 grams. Well, for every 100 grams of the cooked meal, you get 14.9 grams of protein. That is a huge amount of protein. So you could actually just consider this a meal replacement on its own. Wow, it's got a ton of stuff in here. I'm going to try another batch with this mee goreng. The mee goreng noodles, man, they are nice and spicy. And I say some on the road just so you can get a nice look at them. It's got like the little <clears throat> fried onion bits in here. Ah, these things are incredibly tasty. And I can completely understand why the Australian Defense Forces guys, or Australian Defense Force guys, fell in love with these like they have. Well, let's cleanse our palate with a tropical drink. Mmm. That's actually really tasty. It's light. It has a nice fruity taste to it. It's not overly sweet. This is very, very enjoyable. This is probably one of the best ration drinks that I've had in a ration, to be perfectly honest with you. Mmm. It's not overpowering. It's not watered down. I'm sure if you added that extra 100 milliliter of water, it would have acted against it, but I really enjoy that flavor. And of course, the ADF chocolate bar. No bloom going on with this. It's milk chocolate as opposed to dark chocolate. So, man, it's just smooth, nice and creamy. Now, this Jack Link's jerky bar or pepper bar is 25 grams. When you look at the nutrition facts on there, it says it is, it says it has 27.7 grams. Well, this is only a quarter of that, so keep that in mind. Which means you're only getting like 6.9 grams, which is still a generous amount of protein for something that tastes so darn good. The outside is just a little tad oily, but man, this has a nice chewy bit of meat on there. That pepper flavor really explodes. That is dino mite. Then our musk flavored lifesavers. And these don't particularly have to be during lunch. These can be eaten throughout the day just to keep you occupied and satisfied while you are going about your daily activities. It definitely does have an odd flavor. You can see compared to a fresh one in, a, in the one I've been using, they do dissolve very fast. So that's kind of nice, but it's just that flavor. It's just a very odd flavor. I've never had rose water, so I, I can't confirm or deny if it does taste like rose water. It does taste a bit strange, at least to my palate. I would equate it to watching somebody come from a foreign country to a McDonald's and watching them try to take a bite out of their very first hamburger. It's either a hit or a miss. Then facial expressions can be gold. And last but not least, our jam sandwich for our jammy dodgers. These are work really good for dunking in your tea or using with your tea. You have that nice flavor contrast and the sweetness of these biscuits. And the shortbread is sweet, but it's not overpowering sweet. Where you get the jam, it's usually either strawberry or raspberry in most cases. It provides that nice little chewiness to it and that sweetness that you would expect and that would complement your tea. And then, of course, I have my gum. I saved one piece from breakfast. So I'll grab one of these out of here. Maybe. Save my last two for this afternoon or this evening. And chow down and cleanse my palate again. Now on to dinner. Well, let's get dinner started. You saw the way how I prepared this the first time, so I will do that off camera. Of course, then we have everything else.
And before I tear this open, the one thing that I will say that is awesome about these freeze-dried rations is how compact they are. They are molded and formed into this nice, tightly packed brick. You can carry multiple of these. In fact, right here is three of them. That is a huge plus. Not to mention that they just make a whole lot more food than one of these. And let's not forget this pack of extras that we've saved. We'll grab our milk and that other thing of sugar for our tea. And this is Bell branded tea. And just as a disclosure, I only put 250 ml of water into this one, and I'll give it a little sample, and I might put in this tomato ketchup for that nice little acidity, and of course the Tabasco for that nice kick of heat. And then this rice calls for 150 milliliter of hot water. Uh, 5 to 10 minutes, or if you use cold water, it could take up to 20 minutes. And again, just to make things easier, And we'll seal that up to keep that heat in there. And while we're waiting for our 15 minutes for our main, let's get everything else on the tray. Again, we have our last two Mentos. The M&Ms. And again, this is your ration. You can eat these all at once. You can save these for overnight for your radio watch or OP. Or you could have saved your ADF chocolate ration. Or like we said, it's your ration. You get to eat this any way you want. And then as far as I'm concerned, some of the best bread on the market for long-term storage. And there's just the tiniest of little splits right there to open this. But that is all you need. Look at that absolute masterpiece. Now, if you wanted to, you could stick this with your main to also heat this up. And the reason I'm such a fan is this stuff is so airy and fluffy and light. It's not dense like wheat snack bread. This stuff is very, very good. And then we still have our salt and pepper in case if we need it for seasoning. Now, I gave a lot of tips in my last review, but I got one more for you. When you're making your rice or your mashed potatoes, if you do have mie goreng or some other noodle, they say save a little bit of your seasoning, add it to your rice or your mashed potatoes just to give it that extra bit of flavor. Let's take a look at this mango curry lamb. Now, we added 100 milliliter of less water. We can see that definitely makes a difference. This is super thick now, it's not runny. And as far as hydration, you can always drink that little bit of water along with your meal. Okay, we waited that 15 minutes. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna do something different with this as well. You know, it would be a gun dog video if we followed the directions. I'm gonna prepare this three different ways. Just right out of the packet, add this to a little bit, and I'm going to put some of this on the last bit. Clear this bread out of the way and get to scooping. And you can see this makes a generous portion. We'll just scoop a little of it just as it is. You can see corn. I can see pepper in there. I can see some carrot. And then we'll pour just a little over here because we're going to use the last or the remaining batch to mix in the Tabasco and the tomato ketchup. So there's the ketchup and the Tabasco sauce and we will just mix that all in together. And we'll just put that right here. And this is one of the reasons why I take some spices out to the field with me. I've been doing it ever since I was in the army. Well, that is quite a bit. And we'll just mix this in. And after all that, I forgot to put down the rice first. Oh, man. This is going to be fun. All right. Well, like I said, I make my own magic. We'll just pour some right here. So you can see how large of a portion of rice this actually is. And there's still a little in the bag. So let me just squish a little this way. 
Oh, man. Well, like I said, I am not a professional film producer. <laughs> Mix this in just a little bit. <sighs> well, you know what you're going to do. Man, this whole trailer looks like a crime scene out of the show First 48. Okay, let's try the mango curry lamb on its own. Looks pretty good. Smells really good. The vegetables are tender, but the lamb is a little chewy. And you can definitely tell the difference between the 350 milliliter soupy version and the 250 mil nice and thick and smooth version. Take a look at that. See some rice that's hitchhiked in there. You can see a little bit of that carrot. Now these are two totally worlds apart. When you add in that more vinegar based than uh, sugar based that we have in the States, it's a lot less sweet. So it really adds a beautiful flavor profile to this. And then of course now we've sprinkled in some of this uh, hot curry in this one. And I know there are many different types of curries, and curry is a style of cooking. But man, yellow curry just seems to add so much flavor. It's one of my favorite foods. Well, now we'll get in here with some of this rice. Mmm. Well, my rice has cooled down a little bit, waiting all that time. So you might want to take that in consideration if you get this. Make your rice at the last minute so it's nice and piping hot. But man... And this is so good because you get that slight little smooth bit of heat from the Tabasco right off the end. Man, good stuff. And then, of course, you could always use your bread as like a naan or something like that because it is a flat bread. But you can see how it's all light and airy and all those nooks and crannies in there. Just dip it right into your... If you can see those peas, a little bit of corn. Mmm. Hmm. Man, that's good. That's good stuff. Now, I know Steve1989 has one of these, too. I think I'm even more excited to watch his review than my own. Just the way how he describes things, it will put this whole meal right over the top. Let's try a little bit of this tea. Yeah, I know I did it backwards. I should have waited before I put in the the milk and the sugar. I used the whole packet of sugar so it's nice and sweet. Pretty good. Grab some of these M&Ms. They're just your standard run-of-the-mill commercially packed M&Ms. And they literally are just your standard candy shell with a chocolate core. Pretty delicious. Good and crunchy. And just so you can see the rice on its own. For the most part, it's cooked all the way through. And the hotter the water that you use on this, actually, the better it is because it really gets in there and absorbs that water. So definitely a Benny. And you could, it is bland, as imagine you would expect rice would be. And that's one of the reasons why they say just add a little, save a little bit of that seasoning to add it in there. And it just gives it that extra flavor dimension. And then lastly, of course, it would be more Mentos gum to help polish off your meal and cleanse your palate. Well, everybody, this was an Australian Defense Force PR-1M sent to me by none other than Black Dog Surplus, provided to them by Prepack Limited of New Zealand. I'm pretty impressed with this ration, even though there are a lot of common components between the PR-1M and the CR-1M, you can definitely find the merit for having freeze-dried food. As long as you have a water source and the time to make this, this stuff is superior to this, just in the amount of food that you get. One final thing that I would like to say, I would love to give a big shout out to Cameron and Robin from Cambridge, England. Somehow they sent me a message on my Facebook page a year ago and it got stuck in my spam folder. Not that I was dissing you and ignoring you, Ah, uh, that's just the way how Facebook works sometimes, but but super, super thankful for your patience while you were awaiting my reply. I'm going to take a few pics of this stuff before I start chowing down on the remainder. 
I've got that upcoming project that a lot of you voted on not too long ago. I will be starting that soon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all on my next review. Bye.